Welcome to the Simufox Welding Tutorial. Simufox Welding is a welding simulation software capable of simulating many types of processes including arc welding, laser and electron beam welding, and resistance spot welding. In this video we will demonstrate how to create a laser welding process. Launch Simufox Welding and create a new process. Give it the name Laser Tutorial. Set the path to where this process should be stored. This is important for future reference. After creating the new project, a window configuration will open. Please select Beam Welding as process type. You can also enter a description to the project. Leave the gravity box unchecked. For this tutorial we will use two components. Two bearings. Two clampings. And one robot. This is the main window of Simufact welding. There are some important areas to know. The Explorer, where the process is built. The Catalog, where all objects are stored. The Visualization window where you can preview your model. The properties area, showing the details about the selected object. And the control and status bar, where you can control the simulation status. You can start build your process in many ways. Let's begin with importing the components. Right click on geometries and select import. Locate where the upper plate and lower plate files are stored. Select both of them and click open. The geometry import window will open. Here you have to specify in what length unit the mesh was generated. Simufact welding handles many different unit systems without losing conciseness. Choose the appropriate length unit and check the use for all geometries box. Now we have the components available on the catalog. To assign them to the components, simply drag and drop one geometry in one component. The next step is to assign mechanical and thermal properties to the components. Simufact Welding comes with a comprehensive library of materials called Simufact Material. To call this library, right click on Materials and select Library. As mentioned before, Simufact Welding comes with an extensive library of material data. You can use these materials readily, or scale their curves to match a similar material. Besides this option, you can also enter your own material data, or ask for a material model to be generated by Simufact Engineering. For this laser welding tutorial, we will select the S355J2 Grade 3 Multiphase Model. Please select the referred material and click OK. Now that the proper material is imported and available on the catalog, please assign it to each component and also to the robot. To do that, simply drag and drop the same way did to the components. After that, save the project. On the visualization window, use the mouse to center the view. Using the views toolbar, Change the view to the top view. Now we are going to create the boundary conditions to our model. Right click on the bearing and select Generate Geometry. Simufact Welding provides you with a tool to easily generate simple geometries to act as boundary conditions. Make sure the primitive type selected is Cylinder. Then click on Select Location. On the Visualization window, click and drag to generate a geometry. Change the radius to 8 and height to 5 mm. Then click OK, and the geometry will be generated and assigned to the bearing. Repeat the exactly same procedure for the second bearing. The only difference should be the place of the new geometry. It should be on the top of the purple plate. If it happened that the positioning of the geometries are not good or not similar to what you are seeing, you can reposition them. Simufact Welding comes with an embedded positioning tool for both translational and rotational moves. 
To access it, right click on the desired geometry and select Object Manipulation. Select Translation and a dialog will open. Notice that there is also a group of axes that you can use to move the geometry. To precisely move, you might want to use the dialog on which a minimum step can be defined. After finishing all the position, just click close and the changes will commit. Now we have the bearings defined and correctly positioned. The next step is to create the clampings. These clamps will hold the components against the bearings. Change to bottom view to make it easier to locate the positions. The geometries for the clamps are generated the same way as the bearings. Just to differ both, use cuboids instead of cylinders. In Simufog welding the boundary conditions act as rigid bodies and contact is automatically calculated. Therefore, if a clamp is configured to put some force, it will generate some respective stress. After creating the appropriate geometries, double click on the first clamp. Change the action type to stiffness and force. Configure a holding force of 100 newtons and click OK. Repeat the same procedure for the second clamp. This will finish the boundary conditions creation and configuration. Instead of creating the geometries inside Simufact welding, you may want to import your own geometries. This can be done if you already have a CAD data converted into a mesh with a compatible format. With this, Simufact welding provides a great capability of importing entire welding fixtures. Let's focus now on creating the welding trajectories. For this tutorial, we need two trajectories for the tack welds and one for the welding line. The coordinates of the path for the trajectories will be selected directly on the model using a node set. To create a node set, right click on sets and then select new node set. The just opened window on the right has all information need to locate the points. Zoom in a bit on the first tack region. Holding the control button, left click on two aligned points to create the path for the first tack. Click apply changes to node set to commit the changes. One of the ways to create a trajectory from a node set, is to directly drag the node set, dropping it on the trajectory's catalog. As Simufact welding can simulate any combination of welding processes inside the same project, the node set can be either a weld line or a point sequence. A weld line is the kind to use for both laser and arc welding. The point sequence is used when simulating resistance spot welding. Rename the just created trajectory to TAC1 and the first TAC weld trajectory is complete. Going back to the node set window, click on the recycle bin icon to delete the points. Select another two points on the right side of the overlapping area of the two components. Then click apply changes to node set. Again, drag and drop the node set to create the second TAC weld. This action will not overwrite the existing trajectory even if it still had the same name. Rename it to TAC2. Now we have the two TACs already created. The next step is to build the path for the weld line. This is done the same manner as did to the TAC welds. Delete the selected points on the node set window and zoom in on the left side of the overlapping plates. Holding the control button, select one point near to the left side. Then pan the model to select another point near to the right side. After that, click Apply Changes to Node Set. Drag and drop the node set on the trajectory's catalog to create the weld line trajectory. Change the name to Weld, and you can close the node set window. This finishes the process of creating the necessary trajectories for the laser welding tutorial. The next step is to assign the trajectories to the robot that will perform the welding. Easily drag and drop the trajectories from the catalog on the robot in the Explorer area. 
Notice how the visualization area is being updated with the assignment of the trajectories. The black arrows represent the beam angle, while the yellow arrow is the welding direction. Now we need to create the welding parameters for tacking and for welding. Right click on the welding parameter catalog and select, new heat source parameter. A new window will open. In this general properties tab you can describe the process from which the parameters are derived. You can also include an image of the microstructure for reference. For this tutorial, just type laser tack on the process type box. On the welding parameters tab is where some numerical data is inputted. Make sure the unit of the velocity is centimeters per minute and type 320. Simufoc welding comes with three different methods for heat input calculation. Transient and direct, transient direct, and thermal cycle. For laser welding simulations, it is recommended to use transient direct as the power value can be directly specified. We will use a 5000 watt laser for tacking. No up ramping or down ramping is used, please uncheck both boxes. And let's consider the efficiency as 100%. The heat source tab is where the heat source geometry is configured. As Simufoc welding can simulate both arc and laser welding, it comes with two different heat source models. The conventional heat source is used for arc welding. It is the double ellipsoid model. For beam welding the heat source is called laser. A double cylinder model which has a much focused heat distribution. Use the following values to configure the tack weld heat source. Cylinder radius 1.0 Cylinder depth 2.0. Cylinder heat fraction 0.9. Heat source radius 2.0. And surface depth of 0.1. Expand the welding parameter catalog, and rename the just created welding parameter to tacking. Create another welding parameter object. This second object will be the parameters for the weld line. Give the name laser welding to the process type. Change the velocity to 200 cm per minute. The mode of heat input should be transient direct power. The power value is 1250 watt. No up ramping and no down ramping. Set efficiency to 100%. Change the heat source type to laser and input the following values. Cylinder radius 1.0. Cylinder depth 0.6. Cylinder heat fraction 0.8. Heat source radius 1.5. And surface depth of 0.1. Rename the second welding parameter to welding and now we have both processes configured. Drag and drop the tacking weld parameter into each tacking trajectory. Do the same for the welding parameter assigning it to the weld trajectory. After that, save the project. Double click on the robot to configure the beam alignment and timing. In this first tab we can change a number of settings regarding the timing. Here we have the robot settings. Time intervals for the select trajectory. And a summary of the assigned welding parameter. We will not change anything here for this tutorial. On the second tab, which is called trajectories, is where the laser beam alignment can be done. As the meshes were carefully prepared, there is no need to manually set the angles. It is sufficient to mark the orientation and projection on surface boxes. Please do this for all three trajectories. The schematic view is real-time updated accordingly to the configured alignment. You will notice also that the visualization window will update as soon as you start configuring too. Simufoc welding comes with a powerful algorithm to detect geometries and determine the best alignment. Sometimes, when the mesh is not properly created, some manual adjustments are needed. On the third tab is where fillets can be generated. All processes in this tutorial are autogenous, so no material is added. Therefore, no filler is needed. 
Now we are going to configure the last step for a simulation model to be complete. The solver setting. Double click on the solver word marked on red. On this first tab there are some general settings. Please mark the phase transformation box. Remember that for phase transformation to work, the assigned materials should contain the necessary data for phase calculation. Also, this option is only available if you have a valid license installed. In the second tab, called Parallelization, is where both domain decomposition and symmetric processing can be configured. For both cases, each processor being used has to have a license to run. Please mark the Parallelization checkbox. Then set the number of domains to 2. On the third tab you can configure some options regarding the calculation time and result steps. Please set, end time to 15 seconds and the result time step for welding to 0.01 second. Simufact welding comes with adaptive mesh refinement capability. Set the global refinement level to 1, and the nodes in contact with the heat source will be split into 4 smaller elements. You can also configure tracking points to monitor individual nodes. When you do that, all post-processing variables are available locally. On the friction tab you can set a global friction value, or define specific values for a given pair of bodies. Save the project and we are ready to run our first Simufox laser welding model. Rename the process to laser. Click on the blue arrows to update the model status. Then click on the green arrow to start the calculation. Save the project again and the solver will start. After a few minutes, some partial results will be available. This is a powerful feature that comes with Simufact welding. You don't need to wait for the entire simulation to finish. You can tell the software to make the results available at every time step, if needed. This enables you to start the post-processing even though the simulation is still calculating. If something does not look good or correct, you can stop the simulation and review the parameters. This completes our Simufact welding laser welding tutorial. In case you have any doubt, don't hesitate to contact us.